Okay. Let's see how this goes. I want to throw in a candle, right? Because uh, I just got the moon looping. So, as you can see, it's moving a lot faster right now. And we should be able to witness it actually loop back around here. Better yet, let's crank the speed up on the moon real fast. So on line 62, we're hard coding in uh, the speed of the moon. Let's crank it up by 8x. Now it's moving real fast. Watch it. It's looping now. So, this is a good thing. So, over here, I've got this handle that we want to load in, right? And we want to essentially do something similar that we're currently doing with the moon. So, let me slow down the moon again. Now we can show it's actually looping. <clears throat> so first we need to go into our config textures and we need to add an entry. Where's the moon located? There it is. So why not right next to the moon? Let's copy and paste the dictionary entry. So we're going to load a texture color mod, but we're not going to mod any of the colors. Candle zero sheet. And we need to specify the key. And I'm just now realizing over in our to do, we need to add a note. See, it is currently 1619. CDT. Happy 420, everybody. So, when loading in textures from the JSON, we need to make sure we don't add an entry for a key that we have already defined it might get overwritten otherwise so just some error checking that i need to do right anyway back to this so over here we've defined a new texture with the key candle that corresponds to this so from here what are we going to do? <clears throat> We're going to make a new function. It's going to be called spawn candle. Let's copy and paste this function. Keep this process real straightforward and easy. So now we have spawn candle. Now, we probably want the candles to move faster than the moon, right? So, let's make that speed 1. So, they're kind of moving slowish. We're only going to spawn 1 to start with. This is like proof of concept. So, we're just going to call this key. Right, so everything else doesn't change, but the number of clips specified to three. Now, now that we've actually done that, um, we're going to need to call it somewhere, right? So I believe background spawn moon 
is called currently in the main or in BG and knit. Yeah, BG and it's called in the main. So we wanted to do a BG Swan Candle. Um, we'd also have to do it down here. Now, the problem at the moment is that the starting XY position for the candle is going to be the same as the moon, right? So perhaps we would want to actually pass in the XY that we're uh, going to be starting with. In this case, we're, we're hard coding the starting position to be the top right corner of the screen because that makes sense for a starting placement for a moon, right? But we would probably want the XY for the candle to be at the very bottom of the screen perhaps on the far right perhaps more than one candle so but let's start with one candle right let's make sure that this much works so we should see a candle lying on top of the screen after we build As you can see, there is now a flying candle on the top of the screen, but it's not animating. So that's because we forgot to turn is animating to true. And it's still not animating. Why is that? Oh. Hmm. BG Sprites is animating. Update BG animations should be calling is animating. So spawn candle should be animating. Oh, wait. Hmm. Take a look at handle BG transform. Oh. The, uh, perhaps the sprite can, well, that wouldn't make any sense. For the, uh, for the BG transform to, uh, overwrite the is animating aspect
Or maybe we can't see it because it's too high up. No. Based off of the... Uh... Yeah, it's like it's not actually hitting the other frame. If is animating and oh we need to do a separate function for this because we're we're only hitting the uh the sprites map and not the bg sprites map so we would just change all of our instances here of sprites to BG sprites. And then down here, when we call update BG animations, we call update BG animation on our for each. Now we should actually see the candle animate and we do. Now it's just a matter of putting that thing on the bottom of the screen. So how about this? To start with, because eventually we're going to be able to uh, much more easily configure things like starting positions and actually scripting out where all of these things are going to go so that we can actually dynamically customize our levels look from a text file in the same way that we're doing things like loading in the textures and specifying the number of blood pixels that actually spawn as I showed y'all in a previous video. So to start with before we get there let's just do an experiment of putting it on the bottom right so our source X, our source Y, um, the X is pretty much correct, but the Y is going to need to be the target texture height followed by the height of the sprite itself subtracted from that position. So if we wanted to get it on the very bottom of the screen, that's what we would have to do. So, let's go ahead and try that out. Let's see what happens. Now our candle's on the bottom, and it looks pretty good. Well, let's say we wanted to have them in sequence, right? So... do a little uh, refactoring here real quick. So knowing um, that we are able to put a, a new uh, candle at that location, what if we could pass in the, uh, the X? Or better yet, yeah. What if we could pass in the X?
So now, down here, we would have to say something like config target texture width minus some value, or better yet, What if instead of passing in the X for right now, we just randomly select a uh, an X position? Where will it pop up, I wonder? There it is. And there it is again. So what if we were to call this multiple times now? Now we have a ton of them. And they actually uh, properly rotate. In some cases, they overlap. So we would probably want to like intelligently place them. But as you can see, we can fly on top of them and there's no discerning effect as far as that goes. What if we were to play around with something like the scale? What if we made them twice the size? Do they look a little bigger? I wonder. What if we 10x them? Now they look the same. Ah, but something big is showing up there. Oh, that's the moon. Gosh, I'm silly. Alright, so what if we were to crank the scale of the uh, candles up? Okay, they look huge. Something we might be able to do with this. Is uh, have handles that look big up close, but then also go off into a distance. So what if we were to have a random scale? Now we got really weird kind of setup here, but it gives this really interesting kind of effect. Now, to even play around further, we can even do a uh, a variable speed for each candle that we spawn. So now we've got random size candles as well as big and small candles randomly generated. So we're able to actually completely procedurally generate the look and feel of every single level from not only the gameplay mechanics but also the look and as you can see this can very quickly become a very nice looking game